Archaeology in the United States began because of a mystery. Who built the hundreds of strange earthen mounds scattered over a half dozen states between the Mississippi River and the Appalachian Mountains? Today we know it was the ancestors of Native American tribes whose cultures flourished at the same time as those of the Toltec and the Maya in Mexico. Our pioneer forebears, however, believed their Indian enemies were too primitive for such accomplishment. They felt the mounds were the work of a lost race, wiped out long ago by bloodthirsty savages. As settlers pushed westward, some of the first spectacular mounds encountered were at Grave Creek, now part of the city of Moundsville, West Virginia, just south of Wheeling. The Grave Creek Mound, grandest of dozens which once dotted the area, was built by the Adena people about 2,000 years ago. Excavated in 1838, the mound revealed two log tombs with human burials and grave offerings of pottery, metal, and stone. The Adena, like many other cultures around the world, created special high places to preserve their most honored dead. Unlike the Maya and the Egyptians, their temple sites, tombs, and monuments were not of stone, but of earth. Today, visitors may climb to the 69-foot summit of the Grave Creek Mound on a modern staircase. 100 miles to the west, near Newark, Ohio, lies a vast center of Hopewell culture, Mound Builders State Memorial, all that remains of the largest complex of earthen construction anywhere in the world. Visitors first entering the grounds are not greatly impressed. They see only a few lines of raised earth and a number of small natural-looking hillocks overgrown with mature trees. But slowly a grand pattern emerges, a vast sweep of temple mounds, octagon and circular enclosures, and long avenues once covering four square miles on the banks of the Licking River. And the great circle earthworks are only a small fraction of the Newark earthworks still preserved on public land. Most has long since been plowed level by farmers and homesteaders. Well, farming, as shown by the archaeological evidence, was limited to basic seed-bearing plants, squash, sunflower, lamb's quarters, and was only a supplement to their diet of meat, fish, and nuts. The Hopewell earthworks were left us by a middle woodland culture of wide influence, centered in southern Ohio and Illinois. Their great ceremonial patterns are evidence of a strong centralized control over thousands of individuals, if not by government as we know it, at least by accepted custom and religious belief. Such earthworks are believed to have been the sites of great gatherings for ceremonies, feasts, contests of skill and trade, similar to gatherings of Native Americans of whom we have a historical record. The gullies beside most of the mounds, once thought to have been moats, are simply the trenches from which earth was taken and piled up nearby. The names Hopewell, Adena, and Mound are in common use in southern Ohio, appearing on street signs and in the names of local companies. At Mound City, near Chillicothe, Ohio, some 40 miles south of Columbus, lies a national historic park devoted to preserving and explaining the Hopewell culture. Showpiece of the park is a 13-acre necropolis, or graveyard, originally containing 23 burial mounds and covered charnel houses within a rectangular earthen border. In addition to cremations and flexed and extended burials, the mounds contained thousands of shell beads, great quantities of mirror-like mica sheets, copper headdresses, hundreds of carved stone pipes, and knives and spear points of obsidian and flint. 
This mound, cut into a cross section for public viewing, was first excavated in 1921. The burial mounds were carefully heaped up over cremation pits and grave sites to protect them from disturbance. When one site reached capacity, it was covered over, mounded in alternating layers of earth, sand, and gravel, and another site begun. of the 23 mounds here, along with 13 burials and falcon effigies of beaten copper, archaeologists found fragments of human skull, cut, scraped, and drilled to form what they believe to have been a death mask worn by a shaman during the funeral ceremonies. <laughs> The charnel houses, before being intentionally demolished and covered by mounds of earth, were true houses built on roughly the same plan as the Hopewell dwellings. Here, where a mound has been completely removed, archaeologists have placed round markers to show the pattern of original post holes, evidenced by traces of rotted wood in the earth. Double-posted side walls, slanting outward, supported a roof of thatch and bark with a single smoke hole in the center. These mounds were built over a period of about 500 years, twice as long as the United States has existed, and they illuminate only one aspect of Hopewell life, their treatment of the dead. Fifteen miles southwest of Mound City lies the Sipe Mound, another Hopewell burial site now preserved in a public park. The remaining earthworks, as elsewhere, are only a small part of the original 27-acre site first mapped by Squire and Davis a century and a half ago. floor plan of both dwellings and charnel houses, evidenced by original post-hole discolorations, is the same as at Mound City. This detailed stone head was found in the central burial mound, an elongated rectangle of earth which may also have been the focus of Sipe ceremonial life. It may also have been the site of the chief's residence, with a view of the surrounding plains in all directions. Another 20 miles southwest, just 50 miles east of Cincinnati, lies Serpent Mound, one of the most spectacular effigy monuments in the world. This is an Adena creation in the shape of a striking snake a quarter of a mile long. A tree now grows in the open jaws of the serpent. At the other end is the coiled tail. A steel tower now allows visitors to see the snake's figure from above. We know the serpent is Adena rather than Hopewell because of the type, size, and dating of nearby dwelling and burial sites. We do not know if it was intended as a totem of the particular people who built it or as a religious symbol. To many ancient societies, serpents represented eternal life because of their ability to shed their skins and begin life anew. 
We know the Adena people were not ignorant savages from the timeless voice of their art, brought to light primarily through the efforts of Frederick Ward Putnam of Harvard's Peabody Museum, spurred by his competition with John Wesley Powell of the newly created Smithsonian Institution. Early drawings of the serpent, now repeatedly excavated and repaired, differ widely from each other. The figure was created by laying down a pattern of loose rock, which was then covered with a mound of sand and finally with earth and clay. Pottery played a large role in Adena life. as did tobacco and the manufacture of pipes. Then, as later, the Native Americans are thought to have believed in smoke as a connection to the spirit world, using it in treating illness as well as to induce visions. Their weapons and tools were finely crafted. Burials at some distance from the serpent itself followed the classic Adena style, occurring in family or clan groups, or in the successive lineage of head men over generations. Each burial had its own mound, layered above or beside earlier interments. Dominating the landscape, accurately following the contours of this actual snake skeleton, lay the serpent mound, an important force in everyday life for the Adena, and an intriguing mystery today. Ten miles south of Dayton stands another Adena ruin, the Miamisburg Mound, believed to have been built more than 2,000 years ago, one of the earliest of many mounds once scattered over the area. As at the Serpent Mound, there are no outlying earthworks and no perimeter wall. The conical Miamisburg Mound, the largest in Ohio, stands 68 feet high and is 300 feet in diameter. The Adena people who erected it lived in small villages nearby, made thick-walled pottery, and domesticated a number of plants for food. Excavation of the mound in 1860 revealed its purpose as an elite tomb. An adult male burial was found at a depth of eight feet from the apex of the mound. Layers of sand, stone, and earth imply that the mound was built in many stages over a long period of time, perhaps each stage covering the remains of a respected leader. The latest major Hopewell site, Fort Ancient, stands on a bluff above the Little Miami River, 30 miles northeast of Cincinnati. For many years, Fort Ancient was considered a defensive structure because of its walled hilltop enclosures covering more than 100 acres within three and one half miles of earthen and stone walls. Recently, archeologists have determined Fort Ancient to have been a major center of social, economic, and religious functions. Today, roads cut through the walled enclosures and trails may be followed on foot around the entire site. Recent research indicates the Hopewell laid out the earthworks precisely to align with movements of the Sun, Moon, and Venus as guides in planting and harvest and in associated religious practices.
Rockwell tools, weapons, and pottery have been recovered from the patient earth, exhibiting a high degree of craft. Evidence in the soil, their homes and villages have been recreated in miniature. It is their burial practices, however, which speak to us most clearly. Their desire to preserve the bones or ashes of their dead has given us the clearest view of one aspect of the mound builder's life. As time passes, we are able, little by little, to enlarge our vision and to see the Hopewell and the Adena as real people, as doers and dreamers, as early shapers and sharers of our common humanity. <laughs> <laughs>